Hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, a lot going on. Look, uh, I'm going to do the best I can to get to the point. Um, and the reason I'm here, first and foremost, uh, for those of you who didn't see my video earlier, uh, rest in peace to Chesley Christ, uh, former Miss USA 2019 attorney, uh, took her own life on yesterday morning, uh, had been struggling from what I can tell from posts uh, that I've seen in the past and what I was able to look at and, you know, uh, sort of uh, look through on yesterday, had been struggling with a number of different issues for some time. I want to iterate, or should I say reiterate, the importance of understanding that there's no sin, no shame uh, in seeking help. Uh, I will also iterate that it is immensely important uh, that we make sure we're creating the right spaces and safe spaces for people to not be okay. And I'll probably talk about that a little bit later on, but I'm here right now because uh, there's work to do in the community and it's not being done. Um, I've wrestled with what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it uh, for some time. You know, I thought about just sitting up saying, man, deuces, um, and focusing on me and my family. Um, definitely would be an easier route for me, uh, but I'm not a quitter. Uh, it's not in my blood. I gave myself to this a while back, and some way, somehow, I'm going to see myself through it. Uh, let's start with what's on deck, and I'll work my way through it as quickly uh, as I possibly can. I don't want to be here long. Uh, this is not what I want to spend my time on. But several weeks ago, we started a campaign. Uh, and it was a targeted campaign. And I targeted it because there's this intensely, rapidly growing need for resources, wraparound services, and so much more that Dr. Blanchard and I talk about on a regular basis. Uh, but specifically aimed at black males. Uh, there is a peak, there's a spike, excuse me, there's a spike in mental health crises for young black males under the age of 30, starting as early as five years old. Matter of fact, there's an increase in suicide among young black males under the age of 30. Uh, that's in addition to the things we deal with on a regular basis, which is African-American adolescent, young adult male violence, intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide, some of the things we love to deride black men about but don't want to be involved in helping to correct. Uh, you don't pray certain things away. You don't uh, wish things away. Things are changed because you take decisive and consistent action on a massive level. You give some significant energy and effort to exacting change, doing what is necessary to create change. And I've been talking about this for a while, so I decided, you know, hey, we need to really truly just give it a dose, you know, give it a dose. I mean, I, if I talked about what's really necessary to make this thing real, uh, people would think I'm crazy and it'll bring out a whole nother bunch of bull crap that I don't want to deal with. So I said, hey, look, let's just go for something to prove it's possible. Let's do a targeted camp fam fundraising campaign for a week. Let's shoot for $10,000. Hell, I have over 7,000 subscribers and I'm going to share this with them. I'm going to share it on Twitter. I'm going to share it on my Instagram account. I'm going to share it on Facebook where I have 5,000 uh, friends on my personal profile and, you know, thousands on other different, you know, things. I have a, a um, business partnership where we have a, a business um, 
uh, page where we have almost 70,000, if not more, uh, subscribers, you know, followers, whatever you want to call them on Facebook. And so, yeah, let's just do 10,000 a week this week. Call it a fundraiser, do 10,000 this week. Take it a, as a shot in the arm type thing. You know, it's not going to really cover a whole lot, relatively speaking, but it shows that the support is out there. Let's go find the support. Let's find the people. And so we did it. And this was, like I said, pretty much roughly a month ago. Um, we haven't even hit a thousand. Shit, we haven't even hit five hundred. And uh, I was talking to Tony Lindsay, the filmmaker, on how he funded his film, and uh, he absolutely is totally against raising funds for his movies on the scale of trying to get multiple people to do it because someone came to me and they posted on uh, one of the videos I was doing about the fundraiser they posted something that said we gave so and so and so a million dollars and it's on there I'm not going to mention it because I don't want to come across as hating because I ain't mad the person got it uh, hopefully he does what you know what he, what he needs to do with it you know He's produced some good work in the past, so good for him. But they said we gave him 30, you know, for something that's not going to be grassroots in the thing. It's more of an aesthetic thing. We gave him 30, I mean, we gave a million dollars in 30 days, and we can't give Dr. Rick 10,000 in 10 years. And that's actually the truth, <laughs> uh, despite the work, you know, despite all, all the things that you can literally go verify that he's doing and has done, you know, that alone should be enough to sit up and say, you know, we can support him. He definitely has a right to do it. Well, you know, and so I thought about that. And I'm like, no, that's not the route I'm taking. I'm not going out there blasting other people because they're getting support. But the thing is, the few people who are getting support, hey, good for them. Um, you know, I'm not hating on that. Good, you know, that people are raising money and getting things done. What I am having a problem with is that the vast majority of us aren't. The people who are really boots on the ground aren't getting the support that we need. It's real simple. Um, there's absolutely no excuse for it. We can come up with it. We can make up excuses because we're real good at making up excuses. We're real good at coming up why we shouldn't do something. But the problem is that's never how you change things. I can tell you because that's what I do. I help people change things. You don't ever get anywhere by coming up with a reason why you can't do something or you shouldn't do something. You get somewhere by coming up with one good reason why you should. See, it, the one good reason will trump all the other reasons why you shouldn't, and you get out there and you actually make it happen. The reason I've been effective despite not getting support is because I got that one good reason. My reason is I'm not going to leave this world having not touched it. I'm not going to leave this world having not given it everything I have. I'm not going to leave this world having not made my presence felt. And if that means that I have to fight through it and figure out and do whatever it is that I need to do to make my presence felt, will I get everything out of it that I could possibly get? Nope, because what I could possibly get requires people to come in and join and link forces with me. And we do it as a unit. We do it as um a united force but i was talking with tony Lindsay, and we were talking about some of the things that we're going to get together and do over the course of this year and i'm excited about those things but one thing that he put on my mind is he said i would much rather find one person or two who simply have the money and get them behind what i'm doing and get it done than to have a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of opinions and a whole bunch of things. And I started thinking, maybe that's an approach I need. Maybe I just need one person who is willing to step up and write that check, you know. And I'm not talking about 10000 I'm talking about we really need a lot more. We, should, we need 10 more than 10000 a month. Um, and, you know, I just decided that I'm not finna rob my family anymore. Uh, you know, I do well. Uh, but I do well as an individual earner, uh, which belongs to me and my family. And I'll give what I can and do what I can to make sure I'm doing. And I'll resource. And I'm very, very creative in how I get things done. So I'm normally able to get a lot more done than the average person would. But I just sit up and I think about what if I had people behind me that actually want to do more than talk and complain? What if I had people that sit up and say, you know what? 
we could actually educate our own youth. We've got programs and designs and years and years of research behind how that can happen, the best way that can happen. I'm doing it on, on a very minute level, relatively speaking. When you talk about there's almost 48 million of us in this country. But uh, I'm doing it, and so I know it works. What if we could actually socialize young black males instead of trusting the streets to raise them? We could actually create a pro-social mindset that prepares them for manhood long before they reach puberty. I oh, designed a program from that. It's called Black Manly. What if we could actually rescue our daughters uh, from the eels and the pools and look at the over 70,000 black women and females missing in America and that number's climbing because of human and sexual, human trafficking and sexual trafficking. And what if we could provide a better and safer environment for our girls? Uh, we, we're doing that ghettos, restoring ghettos, forgotten daughters. Uh, what if we can, you know, I mean, so we are literally talking about things that we have solutions to that simply need funding, but we would much rather complain about what is not happening and what's wrong than actually be a part of the solution. It's, it's, we've been programmed to do that. We've been programmed to talk. We've been programmed to point fingers. We've been programmed to even emote and get angry and act out. But we haven't been told to, we haven't been programmed to move strategically and consistently and effectively in resolving our issues. We don't look for solutions, we look for problems. And when we find them, we bask in them. We look up and there's this sense of accomplishment in finding the problem. But there's no desire to produce solutions. In fact, if you look, the people who produce solutions are the ones most maligned, most hated, most attacked. Those are the people who are everything but problem solvers. They are problem solvers, but they are viewed as and treated as everything but. And obviously, I'm not solely talking about me. I'm talking about people I work with every day. I'm talking about people who are literally given to doing things that make things better within the confines of the black, black collective and the black construct uh, and community. Uh, it's not even a community anymore. We're living in hoods, not even neighborhoods. Uh, the idea of neighbors and being neighborly is something that suffered drastically over the last 25 to 30 years and it's only getting worse and where there's no neighborhood there can be no community where there's no community there's no replication of village mentality and so nobody's looking out for anybody but themselves and everybody's starting to feed on one another because they're getting desperate and there's a solution but we're not going to deal with the solution we're just going to sit up and complain we're going to sit up and if we are just slightly a little more affluent than those who have the spotlight on them as being criminal minded and and and, and un, unproductive and and, and 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 another number of other different things that we love to malign them. If I'm just a little bit better, then that's someone I can look down on so I feel good about myself. I don't see the social and moral responsibility to reach back and lift them up. I just see I'm not doing as bad as they're doing. You know, and my pride hinders me, and I admit that. My pride doesn't like to ask, and that's something that Tony Lindsay and I talked about too. He said, it's, it's, it's like I'm begging, Doc, and I don't wanna do it. And I said, I get that, I get that. But when you have other people who are depending on you and they feel that some kind of way you can get people to give and I can't, you know, and for whatever reason. But, you know, I still, even though I don't think I'm being effective in doing it, obviously not on a grand scale, definitely not. Not doing it or not trying is not an option. Uh, so you set your pride aside and you say, hey, we need your help. 
And maybe I'm not consistent enough. Maybe you need to ask three or four or five times a day. And that's like hard for me. It really is. It's like, okay, now you are begging. And the truth of the matter is, when you look at real fundraisers, and you see them all the time, you just don't recognize them as fundraisers. When St. Jude comes on with that TV commercial 35 times a day about giving, they're raising funds. When you see the United Way, they're raising funds. When you see those poor little pitiful dog commercials, they're fundraising. When, you know, everybody does it and nobody looks at what they're doing as being negative until a black man stands up and says, hey, I'm trying to do something special for the black community. Yeah, what's your angle? What you up to? What you doing? You know, I've had people worry about what kind of truck I drive. I own five businesses and I don't owe it to every person I work with to give them a piece of that because that's my passion. That's my business. And not no not and you gotta think, we're talking ten, eleven thousand dollars in over twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen years. You think you actually bought the vehicles that we own or the home we live in? You really think that? You know, I'm not gonna talk about my earnings, but trust me, I earn enough to take care of my family. I mean, you know, the last three years have been crazy because of COVID and a bunch of other things had some major hits in a couple of businesses, but I've seen a whole lot worse and I've held it together. And $20 and $5, you know, a month and $50 a month or whatever. And a couple of people who have gave a hundred dollars, please don't think I'm spitting on you. The people who have gave $5, please don't think I'm spitting on you. If you've given, I'm not, I'm not belittling what you've done. If you've given me 50 cents, it's a it, it, it's a vote of confidence in what I do, and I take it with a great deal of appreciation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about there's a lot more out there. There's a person that could literally write the check that could fund this program for a month. There's a person who can literally give that could fund this person this this program for a year. And then there are a bunch of people who could give fifty dollars and a hundred dollars. Who sit up and watch these videos every day many of the videos that provide uh, stimulation inspiration and direction on how to help themselves that they get absolutely free every day I I'm putting up videos every day that if you pay attention to it they are directive and they give you what you need to actually do something I've written 20 books that are extremely affordable, that point to a bunch of things that can eat, that, that produce change. Um, you know, I've given myself, I've, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not sitting around, you know, you know, shooting, uh, whatever you want to call it. I'm literally giving myself. And there are so many times that I've given myself, literally, in, in individual situations, that very few people will hear about. You know, I've made up in my mind that there are some things I've got to do differently when just simply dealing with black clients because I've always cut deals with black clients and they've always been problematic. There have been always, there have been some great, some of my greatest clients are my black clients. But a lot of the problems, the more of a deal I give them, the worse problems they are. And, you know, that's that's a whole nother thing. I want to get on that. But look, black men lead. Black men lead. We're talking about the social media era. We're talking about the time, things that can go viral. The things we share determine what goes viral. And I look at what typically, go, typically goes viral in the black community. Very rarely is it something that helps. It's something that entertains. It's something that blind, uh, uh, belittles someone, maligns someone, puts someone in a bad light, uh, makes fun of someone's misfortune, or it's normally bad news. Uh, we don't make the things go viral that can literally be game changers. And they count on us doing that. They count on us not having the wherewithal of using the leverage of the very platforms that they have out there to actually do something powerful. We find ways to tear down and malign. 
and the few times that we go all in to help normally has something to do with entertainment. Like, we'll get behind something if it's going to make a movie or something like that. And, and nothing wrong with that. I, we need that. We need that. That's a part of how we build our identity, how we develop ourselves, how we control and move. That's a part of it. I get it. I understand it. I'm not tripping on that. But what I am saying is talking about and maligning and whining and complaining about the things that you have the ability and the capacity to change is foolish. It's irresponsible. And it's one of the things that has kept us in last place for decades. At one point, I was ready to throw in the towel. Not because I was whipped, but because I just felt like my family deserves better. I deserve better. I don't have to be stressed out about all this. But I can't stop caring. I'm who I am. So when somebody sends me an email or somebody reaches out and they start to tell me the story about their son, about what they're going through, and I'm talking about everything from little kids that are in kindergarten all the way up to kids who are incarcerated. I find myself caught up because I care, because I feel, and it, and it moves me. And as much as I want to be selfish, as much as I want to just sit up and say, man, I'm going out here and get my money to hell with it all. I'm not built that way. And it comes at a price. But I'm going to put this out here. And I'm going to challenge those who watch this video to come hard. Because what I can tell you is what I'm seeing is at some point in time, there's going to be somebody close to you that's going to need what I do. It's getting real and we're breaking, we're fracturing, and it's happening at a more ra rapid and decisive, uh, rapid pace and in a more decisive manner. Uh, we, we are literally on the cusp of becoming completely irrelevant in this nation um, in the way we are being handled politically uh, in the realm of education in the realm of the judicial system socioeconomically and the only people that are going to do anything about it is us we're either going to take action and prepare our youth or we're going to watch them be destroyed. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. If you want to be a part of the solution, number one is I am. I'm looking for some heavy hitters who can actually get behind what we're doing and make something happen financially. I'm talking about people who are capable. Maybe you're not that person, but maybe you know somebody. But I'm also calling on you. If you're watching this, if you're sitting up watching me on a regular basis, I need you to ride with me on this one. I need consistent support in getting some things done because this is the year that I'm going to be doing a lot of things for me and my family, but I don't want it just to be for us. I want it to be for as many people as I can possibly touch. A lot of that's going to depend on you guys because I'm not going to put my family in jeopardy to get it done. You know, the people who come to me and know my worth and pay me, that's for me and my family. I'll do what I can, and I'll, I have a system that de determines how I move and what I'm able to do in the community. But I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make some things happen. Um, for the people who want to be a part of it, hey. This is more than about listening to videos and talking on it and discussing problems. This is about taking action. So I'm calling on you to do that with me. On that note, look in the description box. Look at the different ways that you have to give. And let's see what happens. On that note, I'm out of here. Peace.